Hello, happy holidays, welcome back, it's been a minute. Today, we're gonna go even further with this little flute sound. And we're gonna make this. Let's do it. Okay, so last time we were here, I showed you how to make custom pads and synth washes out of a very simple sound source, in this case, a flute, uh, by pitching it, time stretching it, and running it through delays and reverbs, in this case, a Tai Chi from Liquid Sonics. And prior to that, I'd done a video on making custom percussion loops, but someone challenged me to take the two ideas and combine them and take a flute sound and make percussion sounds and rhythmic stuff out of that. So that's what we're gonna do today. So I'll start by showing you the track and then uh, we'll start picking it apart piece by piece. But before I do that, if you like these videos, please take the time to hit all those buttons down below so you know when I've made a new video. Okay, so that entire drum track was made out of just a single sound, a flute. In fact, one little flute sample. Let me show you what it is here first. That's it, all right? We're gonna build everything that you heard out of that sound. Okay, so first of all, what's a good drum sound made out of? Well, it's gotta have some body, it's gotta have a certain timbre, and it's gotta have a tack. So since we're working with a flute, let's, um, for instance, just start with the body part of it. A flute is too high of a pitch, so the first thing we gotta do is we gotta start pitching this thing down. So first of all, let's just take a small chunk of the flute. All right. And we will pitch this thing down. In this case, let's go down, we go minus 36. And we're not gonna use time correction. The reason being, I don't want to compress the actual waveform. I wanna keep the entire waveform intact because it's sonically, I think it's, it's better than actually crushing the waveform. So we'll leave time correction off. Now, once again, I can chop off most of it. And actually, I actually already have a tiny bit of fade in on that. Just enough to not have a pop and then this one just a little bit, just so it sounds like a natural decay. That's even a little too long. All right. Make that a tiny bit longer. All right. So that is sort of thumpy, but not really. The next thing I did was add in quadrifuzz. Now, the reason I use quadrifuzz is I want to add some more harmonic content. Right now, it just doesn't, doesn't have a lot of, you know, oomph, I guess the best way to put it. So I use quadrifuzz, gives it a little bit of fuzz. If you know anything about subtractive synthesis, um, the way that works is you start with a sound that has a lot of harmonic content, and then you filter out the stuff you don't want, as opposed to additive synthesis where you pile sounds on. So what I'm doing here is kind of giving it harmonic content uh, more than I need, and then I'm gonna then filter out the stuff I don't want. I use Quadrifuzz uh, because it's built into Cubase. There are other ones out there. Uh, Thermal and Saturn are good options for you. The multi-band distortion is nice because I can alter what I do to each band, right? This, that's the way that stuff works. So I can have more drive on the low end or more drive on the mid, and I can change the EQ shape just with a couple of uh, real quick clicks. Very handy. So now we've got a little more grit. Next thing I added was an Octaver. Again, just using the, the default plugins here as much as possible. It's not a whole lot different, but it just I'm just add, trying to add more low end. Now, next up, I added a non-stock plugin. This is R Bass from Waves. I know there's a lot of hatred for Waves at times. I think that's misplaced. This is one of those plugins that I don't think I could live without. I love R Bass. It works so great for all kinds of different things. And I'm using, which I think is the, uh, I think Alan Myerson uses the 42, but you know, if you're a fan of Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, that 42 shows up there too. And it is the answer to the life, the universe, and everything. Something you probably saw a lot in my percussion video, in this case using multiband, but um, this is an envelope shaper. So 
So I'm adding a little more attack to the very low, and then even a little more uh, more attack on top of that to uh, the upper mid range. This is where some of the harmonic content from the uh, Quadrifuzz plugin lives. And then lastly, frequency, just to additionally shape the uh, sound of the kick. All right. So here's without. Now that's just the thump part. Okay, so next what I want to do is add a little bit of uh, attack, really just a little bit of sound of the beater just on top of it. So I use the same sample, basically. But in this case, I changed what the quadrifuzz is set to first. Added more high end, more distortion up in the upper mid range, right? So I want, because I want to emphasize top end more. Um, I also added a bit crusher. This is kind of cool because it gives even more just distortion, basically. But I, I like the way bit crushers sound for an electronic sound because you know they, by their very nature, are very electronic sounding. Again, envelope shaper, but this time I just used the uh, a single band because I'm only really working on that that one section of the frequency range. And then bringing in the EQ, you see I just took the previous EQ and I just applied a high pass filter and a pretty very steep uh, low pass filter to just grab one range. To put those two together. Um, I also took both of those sounds and run them through another EQ. Don't be afraid to stack EQs. I took both of those sounds, the low end thump and the beater sound, run those through uh, a group and added an EQ to them there. And that is our kick. Let's look at the next part of the, the beat and it's a hi-hat. So let's look at what I did. Uh, what this is, is that flute sound, but in this case, pitched up 43 half steps. So it is just a, a beep at this point. Used a bit crusher. Also, I should mention that I changed the volume level of each of the samples uh, to give the hi-hat a little bit of rhythm. So it's not just completely straight one dynamic level. And then once again, frequency, a very steep high pass. And then I added a stereo delay. This is kind of a cool little trick where you set one side of a stereo delay to as low as you can get it, in this case, half a millisecond, and then the other half to uh, a 16th note or an eighth note, whatever you want your pattern to be. And it allows you then to you control the stereo field of that of the hi-hat. It'll make it sort of bounce around without you having to automate uh, panners or automate um, any kind of tremolator or whatever, right? So. so if you notice. So I can adjust the pans so I can have one side be really hard right and the, the 16th delay to be almost all the way left, but not quite all the way. It's a silly little trick, but it just sort of saves time of having to, you know, uh, without having to do that kind of panning trick or have two different hi-hat tracks. Next up is the snare. Let's go all the way down here and we'll solo all the drums together. Let's look at the snare by itself. Once again, I just have that, that uh, super pitched up flute tone. Let me turn the reverb off on that so we just hear the original. I turned to Bit Crusher because I want it to sound electronic. Oh, I should say something about the Bit Crusher in here. Um, I'll be honest, I haven't read the manual for Bit Crusher. I don't know what each of those modes does. I just keep clicking around until I get something that I dig. So I encourage that. I mean, read the manual, but sometimes it's just clicking around and playing around. You get something more interesting that way. So something to try. Uh, so I add the Bit Crusher and then again, turning to frequency, 
high pass and low pass filters very steep because I want to, in this case, I want to create one of those sort of tiny snares, almost like, you know, fine young cannibals or something. And you could adjust this if you want more or less body. So when you have all the drums together, Now, let's turn to the next track here. Now, this one is a, a much simpler. I started with a Tai Chi. How did I get that out of a reverb? Well, um, if you remember from last time, Tai Chi has a bit crusher built in. So I wanted to play with that one as opposed to the stock one. So the first thing I did was create a reverb room with a bit crusher already built into it. Pulled up a Pro Q3 because I wanted to filter out a bunch of sounds here. So it starts to sound a little more of like a cruddy Farfisa or something. And then another Tai Chi. Now it's starting to get dreamy sounding, starting to sound like a Roland or Juno or something. And then we need rhythm. Uh, Tremolator from Sound Toys. This is great for doing pulsy stuff. So, now in this case, I'm using ramp down as opposed to just a square or sign or something like that. Ramp down is kind of cool because it sounds like an old school synth, at least to my ears. And then the uh, last thing up was, it looks like I pulled in another, another Pro Q3. Now, I just took that, that single pitch and then pitched, it, pitched each region up and down. And with that long delay, you get kind of a cool effect after a while. So, that gives us a nice ARP sound. Next up is this guy. All right, again, this is just chopping up. <laughs> I took the ARP sound, I think from, or no, I took, yeah, just the same flute sound from here and just chopped it up and changed the pitches a whole bunch. Uh, let's turn them all off here and we'll just loop this little section. Okay, so that little beep at the top, that's actually from the snare and hi-hat programming part. When I pitch changed it, I only it only shifted that very first um, snippet, and then it left the rest pitched way down. So when I drug, drug it back out, I ended up with this weird dual pitched thing, and it was kind of interesting, so I thought, oh, you know, I'm gonna leave that. It's, kind of, it's a weird glitch artifact thing, but let's just start with that and see if it creates something interesting. We'll add the bit crusher. Frequency, high pass, low pass filters. Which, you know, if I want more. Um, stereo delay again, in this case, just a quarter note ping pong. No, it's not even ping ponging, so and then Tai Chi. Okay, so. So, that leaves us our last track here, and that is this sort of bass track that I created. Now you can hear there's that little glitch in there. 
And honestly, it's just the same kind of stuff. Uh, I did switch to Amp Simulator just to give me a slightly different tone than frequency. Uh, in this case, I did not use quite the steep high pass and low pass filters and then added a stereo delay. Okay, just a little bit of movement there, okay? When we take all these together, Okay, so I think that's a wrap. Uh, I think now we've done everything we can possibly do with a flute. We've made pads, washes, pulses, arps, and drums. This should really drive home the idea that you can make virtually any sound with any sound source. You just need a little bit of creativity and a few plugins. To my friends that are sample library developers, please don't hate me. Trust me, I still think you guys do this better than I do. But to the rest of you, go have fun, enjoy the process, and I'll catch you guys next time.